Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to talk about why I'm not exercising to try to get my period. Ever since I posted that video about me not getting my period and what I'm gonna do to try to get it back, um, I got a lot of responses and a lot of emails and comments and questions asking about, well, can't you still exercise and get your period? You just eat a lot more or people say that they have been trying to get their period but they've also been exercising lightly or people have said that they actually got their period back while still exercising and that it's totally okay to do that. I just want to talk about like why I personally am not trying to do any exercise other than like walking lightly or just some light yoga. And these are just like my personal opinions and what I think would be best for my body knowing my own past and all that. Yes, it is possible to exercise and get your period back as long as you exercise lightly and you eat a lot more calories because that's what your body needs, right? Is calories. If you get more calories and you emphasize rest, and allow your body that energy to put toward your reproductive system then your body won't think that you're constantly in an emergency situation where it needs to conserve energy and give it to all of your other bodily functions now what you're seeing in your life is you're just exercising and eating less trying to lose weight be healthy blah 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 follow vegan diet be high carb low fat um, do everything that one person two or three people say to do that are really prominent on social media and then you lose your period right well, what you're seeing in your mind is you're exercising, you're being healthy and all that stuff. But what your body is seeing is that you're in a tropical jungle and you're eating fruits and vegetables. But from time to time, you are sprinting hard, you're running far, you're trying to get away from something that's putting yourself in danger and it needs to conserve the fruit and all the low fat foods that you're eating. It needs to conserve the energy that you're getting from that to put to you getting away from something. What you see as exercise is what your body is seeing as you trying to run away from something, you basically surviving. And so it sees your body in a survival mode type of situation. Why would your body say that, oh yeah, it's okay, we can have a baby right now, we're safe enough to have a baby. Like, no, your body doesn't wanna do that. So knowing that and going into the whole exercise thing, I wanna get into a little bit more science and um, quote some articles I have on my laptop here that I have researched and brought up as to the reason why I don't want to exercise while I'm trying to get my period back. So in science and biology classes, we learn stuff about our nervous system. So we have a nervous system and it's broken down into two parts, which is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Your central nervous system consists of your brain and spinal cord, and the central nervous system is the integrative and control centers, which means that they take the information in, interpret it, and then send the information out. And your peripheral nervous system is made of your cranial nerves and your spinal nerves, and they basically do what the central nervous system says. They are the ones who take the information and give it to the central nervous system, and they take the information from the nervous system and bring it out to the rest of your body, so like your muscles, your organs. And then your peripheral nervous system is then broken down into your sensory and motor division and of course sensory senses all your things and motor division does the thing so sensory gets the information and the motor division does the shit that the central nervous system is telling them to do and then if you break down your motor system into um, more branches it goes into your autonomic nervous system and your somatic nervous system your somatic nervous system are the things that you do like I can lift my arm and move my mouth and blink and all that that is part of my somatic nervous system in the motor division um, of your peripheral nervous system I know there's a lot of branches but bear with me and then in your autonomic nervous system, as you can tell from the auto, those are the things that you can't control. So that's like blinking when I don't think about it. That's breathing. That's my heart beating. That's my digestive system moving because you don't tell your stomach to digest. It just does it for you. You don't tell your heart to beat. It just does it for you. And then when you break down the autonomic nervous system, you go into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. The sympathetic nervous system is the one that mobilizes your body systems during activity. So it's also known as fight or flight. The parasympathetic is the part of the nervous system that wants to conserve energy. And that is also called the rest and digest division of your nervous system. So all the things that your parasympathetic nervous system controls is the things that happens when you're resting. Your digestive organs are moving, they're digesting your food, you're breathing regularly, your heart is beating slow, you're just resting basically. And in the sympathetic division, 
is when everything is heightened and in nature your sympathetic system is the one that's activated when you see a bear and you're like oh my god what do i do do i fight the bear or do i run away and most of the time we run away and so when you're running away think of the muscles and the body systems and functions that would come into play so that would be like your muscles start to tense up your heart starts beating faster because you need more blood to bring to your muscles to help you run away your breathing gets faster because you need more oxygen to put into your blood to bring to your muscles to help you run away and does your body prioritize digesting burritos at that time to help you run away from the bear or the tiger in nature no so your digestion is kind of put to a halt to help you survive right now Digesting your food is not a priority. Getting away from the danger, from the bear, the lion, the tiger, the fire, that is what is most important. And this is where I want to bring in the exercise portion. Your sympathetic nervous system is activated when you are in a state of excitement. And in that state of excitement, exercise, so anything that gets your heart pumping, you sweating, that is included in what is exciting your body. Have you noticed that when you start exercising, you're not really that hungry, you're not like digesting anything, you're just going. Your muscles are going, your breath's going, your heart's going. That is your sympathetic system working. It's also releasing hormones. The three main stress hormones released in your sympathetic nervous system are norepinephrine, cortisol, and adrenaline. These hormones are really good for survival. Adrenaline is the main fight or flight hormone. It's produced by the adrenal glands after receiving a message from the brain that a stressful situation has presented itself. In this case, our body can't really figure out the difference between exercise, which is supposed to be not stressful for us, and a life-threatening situation because you use the same division of your nervous system to control both. So those stress hormones are released, right? And they help you survive, and that's good. We need those in our bodies. But when those are released, um, there's a study done by UC Berkeley that stress puts a double whammy on reproductive system. So the U University of California Berkeley researchers have found what they think is a critical missing piece of the puzzle about how stress causes sexual dysfunction and infertility. So basically what happens in the study, and I will link it down below, is that when the stress hormones come, your body doesn't prioritize reproductive health. Because why would it be okay for you to raise a child in dangerous condition? Basically what happens is when those stress hormones are released, your sex hormones are inhibited because it's not a priority to be ovulating. It's not a priority to be reproducing, which is why I don't want to exercise when I'm trying to get my period back. And I understand a lot of people can do it if they just eat more, blah, blah, blah. But I want mine as soon as possible, so I want my body to know that it's at peace. You're not being stressed out, you're in a safe condition, please produce estrogen for me. Please have a period is what I'm trying to tell my body. If I exercise, then those stress hormones will come and disrupt everything, and then it'll just keep me further away from my goal. I found a lot of studies that are saying you need estrogen, but the production of estrogen can be slowed down by the influx of cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine, and all that into your body. People who have their periods do exercise and do use their sympathetic nervous system in those cases, and that's totally normal it's healthy but for me i've been telling my body that it is in a state of caloric deficit and a state of stress and danger for so many years that my body thinks that putting a baby into this world and ovulating and having a period is just not a priority so yes you can have a period and still exercise and be in those modes of stress but for me i just haven't been able to tell my body that it's at peace that it's at rest that it's okay to have that and to have a child and bear a child so i really want to make sure that my body knows it's at peace and it's at rest because it does not know the same thing as my mind. I'll link all the studies that I found down below and you guys can take a look at it if you're also trying to get your period back but still exercising because I really think that this is worth a look. I know a lot of people have also reached out to me and said like, I really am trying to get my period back and I'm also exercising, it's just taking a long time. I would really think about this and try to consider like, you have your whole life, you have so many years to exercise. What is one year off? to try to get your health and your period back. What is one year of just like sitting and eating and resting and having a good time compared to like 40 years of you trying to get your period and getting stronger bones and having normal cycles like everyone else? That's how I've kind of convinced myself that it's okay that I'm not exercising because 
this isn't going to be how I'm living for the rest of my life. Like right now, I'm just trying to prioritize my health and my bones. And I also feel like it's helping me in knowing that I don't need to rely on exercise for mental sanity, that I can rely on other things, that there are other activities out there in the world and life is just more than exercise. So I hope this has helped you guys and inspired those of you who are trying to get your period back but also are exercising to like reevaluate what's most important and to help you get back on track with your mental and um, bodily health that doesn't include exercise. And if you're considering it but you're just like, oh my gosh, I really don't want to give up exercise, just think of it. Like if I'm doing it, you can do it too. We're not doing this alone, guys or, or girls. Um, yeah girls because guys don't get periods <laughs> but anyway <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this and let me know if you have any questions i'm not a period expert and i'm just like reading to you guys what i know and kind of explaining why i'm doing what i'm doing if you want to know more about this you have a lot more questions i guarantee you that it is covered in this girl audra's get your period ebook that you can get i will link it down below you can also visit her youtube channel where she leaves so much valuable information on periods and eating disorder related things that would really benefit you. If you haven't watched any of her videos yet, you should definitely go watch. I will leave it either here or down below, which is kind of embarrassing because what if I don't leave it here and it's just down below, whatever. Um, so yeah, go take a look at that if you want because I can't really cover everything. I don't have that kind of experience, nor do I have that kind of like background um, in research and stuff. Again, I'm just explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So yeah, if you want to learn more for yourself, definitely go check her out. If you like this, press the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys soon. Bye! I just know that in the future I'll be having kick-ass vegan Christmas dinners and Thanksgiving dinners and New Year's dinners because I'll be in my own space, in my own kitchen, like I'll be able to cook.